Hey everyone, this is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com and DevOps TV here at Interconnect 2017 on the show floor at Mandalay Bay. I'm happy to be joined by Jeff Sussner of uh, Engineering IT. Did I mess that up? No, you got it okay. Great. <laughs> so I, I was actually happy to meet Jeff. This is the first time we've met in person though. Jeff is someone I have followed on Twitter probably since we launched DevOps.com and before that even. So Jeff, first of all, it's a pleasure to meet you in person and you welcome. Too. Great to be here. Um, so Jeff, what brings you to Internet or Interconnect 2017? So I'm here as part of the Cloud Minds uh, Social Influencer Program, thanks to Amy Hermes for bringing me here. Um, and to some degree, it's just an opportunity for me to kind of immerse myself in the IBM world that I'm mm -hmm. new to um, and sort of observe what's going on and uh, meet with a lot of folks and just sort of expand my particular knowledge of this world. And Cool. So this is your first interconnect. It I, is. So I got you. I've, I've been here now. This is my third. And it's... Uh, what, what's your impression? It's only day one, of course, right. or day two. What, what's your impression so far? Well, I'm, I'm impressed that, um, as I said on Twitter today, you know, IBM doesn't seem to be giving a particularly conservative message. It's funny because when I came here, I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea whether everyone would be wearing a suit or not. Yeah. Um, and at least yesterday, it seemed like everyone they brought up on stage was wearing jeans. Um, so there seems to be a, a pretty forward-thinking, uh, visionary approach. Um, this isn't just about selling more boxes or selling more software. Um, and I, I've been very impressed by that. Yeah. You know, some people like to say it's where the cool people at IBM hang out. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, you know, Jeff, you're right. I, I've worked with the IBM DevOps team in particular. Which, again, is, you know, for those of you at home who don't really know much about Interconnect, DevOps is one piece of it. There's the Watson and cloud and hybrid mm -hmm. cloud, private cloud, and all these different, you know, moving parts. Agile, obviously, DevZone. But I've been working with the DevOps team at IBM for a while. And, and frankly, in spite of the perception of the blue tie or red tie with the white shirt, the DevOps team has always been cool. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've had done a good job of bringing some good thinkers in there, some, some people who kind of get it. And maybe it was because a lot of the DNA comes from acquisitions mm -hmm. they did, like Urban Code mm -hmm. and, and some of the other things. But nevertheless, what, what's interesting is, you, for me anyway, Jeff, is you've got this big IBM monolith. Right. Right? That's trying to be cool with the DevOps <laughs> crowd. At the same time, the DevOps crowd is trying to go corporate, right? And move upstream to the large enterprises. Mm -hmm, DevOps mm -hmm. isn't just for unicorns. DevOps isn't just for startups. Right. DevOps really belongs in the enterprise. Right. And and so you have, you know, the, the enterprise is trying to not be so cool perhaps, or the, you know what I'm saying? They, the DevOps crowd trying to not be so cool to appeal to the enterprise. Well, what I, you know, it's funny. We talk about this sort of DevOps for unicorns and DevOps for enterprise. Right. I mean, if you look DevOps at is DevOps. what it is as its core, this whole idea of breaking down silos, yep. that's an enterprise problem. By um, and large. And, and w one of the really encouraging things that I'm seeing is that enterprises, at least my clients, are figuring out that it isn't business as usual. It isn't just about bringing a new, new tool set. I'm getting the sense we're starting to get over that. Yeah. This whole idea that you can or can't buy a DevOps product, I'm not really hearing that anymore. I'm hearing companies grapple, and to some degree they struggle, but they're still grappling with the idea of, well, how do we incent experimentation? How do we incent agility? How do we create trust and collaboration and empathy? And they're, they're trying to figure out how to actually do it. Yeah. Um, so my sense is that in the in the coolness, uh, soberness equation, it's more that the enterprises are getting less sober, if you will, than that the DevOps folks are sort of having to grow up Maturation, and put a tie on. yeah. <laughs> Never a tie. Never a tie. They don't even wear ties at IBM anymore. But, uh, but you know, Jeff, it, it, it's an interesting thing in that we, I, I always, so here's my take on this thing, right? Is I forget if it was Forrester or Gartner or one of those, one of the analyst firms said, uh, you know, almost a majority now of enterprises are actually 
somewhere in a DevOps transformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some are obviously further along than others. The overwhelming majority, though, are still doing what I call pockets of DevOps, a single pocket mm -hmm. or maybe some isolated pockets of DevOps. The companies that I like to look for, especially at events like this, are companies where those pockets are, it's kind of like when you're blowing bubbles as a kid. When those bubbles come together and right. form bigger bubbles, right. same thing with these pockets of DevOps, right? Pockets of DevOps start joining, yep. Yep. you know, and, and now all of a sudden you have major DevOps kind of movement within an organization. Yeah, and I find that there, I, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the challenge that we still have to communicate and teach people is how do you, how do, you do that scaling? You right. know, um, and because it is a process, it isn't a binary transition nope. and it doesn't, you know, if, if the previous mistake was, I can just buy a product, I think the current mistake is, well, we'll just do DevOps yeah. and everybody's DevOps now. Um, and in, interestingly, I also find that there's a certain naturalness to it because as one part of the organization starts doing it, they put pressure on mm. other parts of the organization. It's kind of like right out of the goal, um, right? When you, you fix one bottleneck, right. it creates you know, the next bottleneck. One of, one of my favorite things to do with a company, which seems like a very simplistic and remedial thing, is kernel patch automation. Okay. Because what it does is it forces so many different people to work together. Mm -hmm. across so many parts of the organization and you actually can't solve it in the enterprise when you have these le legacy applications that have lots of orchestration requirements. Um, it can't work unless you start pulling a lot of those pieces together. So what I do is I always look for opportunities of how can we do little things that will force different mm -hmm. groups from very different parts of the organization to actually talk to each other. Interesting, so kind of leverage points like that. Yes, exactly. So, so, Jeff, you're someone who's actually out there talking to multiple organizations as part of your, your consulting practice. And you're not IBM. You're not uh, PwC or one of these guys. You're Jeff Sussner, right? Yeah. And so a little bit of a different view, though, too. What are you seeing that maybe isn't what the IBM world or mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the PwCs right. of the world are seeing? So I see a couple of things, um, and I want to speak to whether IBM and PwC see them right or not, or wrong, but what right. I see, but what I see is a couple of things. One is more and more of my work is about organizational design, mm -hmm. um, and more and more of my work is going beyond DevOps because pretty much everywhere I go now and every conversation I have is about you have to get product in the conversation, you have to get design in the conversation. And in a, again, it's, it's this thing of creating these pressure points mm -hmm. um, where once Dev and Ops start to talk to each other and start to be able to move more quickly, the immediate next question is, well, where does product actually want you to move? Right. Um, and if that's an arm's length relationship, it doesn't work very Not well either. either. So I really find that my practice goes way beyond Dev and Ops at this point. Um, the other thing that kind of intersects with them is, you know, to me, the real bottom line here, where this all comes from is we now live in the service economy. And so we've made this shift from focusing on kind of making things to actually delivering experiences. And the thing about service experience is, is that how you make it is part of what you make. You know, if you have an experience with a healthcare provider or a bank or an airline or, or whatsoever, and you run into this sort of clumsy, inefficient, bureaucratic back end, you can see it. Yeah. And it bugs you, and it's part of your user experience. So the sausage factory is now part of, it's part of what we have to design, mm -hmm. it's part of what we have to operate. And so the other thing is that I'm more and more focused on this idea of internal service and internal design. So if I'm a security group, mm -hmm. my job is not to own security. My job is to help the rest of the organization deliver security. Um, and or deliver securely. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, when I say de deliver security, I mean deliver things that are secure. Yes. Deliver code that's secure, deliver mm -hmm. infrastructure that's Amen. secure, deliver relationships through the software development life cycle that are fast but secure. Yep. So as a security person, I have to think about what do these people need to succeed and how do I help them? 
which is a very, very different perspective for Amen. everybody in <laughs> IT. But well, it's a very it, different perspective for security people, too. <laughs> we thought we were the people who say no. But, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> well, but for all of us, it's I run the database, mm -hmm. right? I run the web logic yeah, server, There's definitely a little bit of giving up control of, right. the, of the baby. And when you do that, when you start thinking about how you are enabling others, that's really when these pockets actually start to come together yeah. and how you create entire organizations that are fast, but also produce something that's useful because that's really what and, we're and here to do. And better quality, sure. You know, so you hit on something a favorite of mine, Jeff. I, I spent 15 years in security before DevOps.com. So we were out at a RSA conference. This is the third or fourth year we've done this DevSecOps, rugged DevOps thing mm -hmm. at RSA conference. We had 900 people this year. And what I'm, what I'm beginning to see, and it does my heart good, is security people actually embracing what you just said. That's fantastic. The first couple of years, it was very territorial. Like, don't mess with my bone. My bone, <laughs> right? I'm, it's my only thing. They only give me one bone, and, and you're taking it away from me. But I think they're starting to realize that if we make security everyone's job, mm -hmm. and we make security everyone's responsibility, and right. we build security into the developer, into the check-in of code, into the testing, the automation, mm -hmm. that you don't have to do so much afterwards because right. it's done. Right. It's baked in. Yes. And, you know, I, I hope that this is the trend we continue to see, but... Uh, there are still cold dots out there, right? Oh, yeah. Territorial. Oh, yeah. It is what it is. Anyway, so this is your first interconnect. Good, good impression so yeah. far. Yeah. Um, what else are you looking forward to? Anything? Uh, well, yeah, I'm looking forward. So next month, I'm taking my fourth trip to Berlin in the last 12 months. Good of for you. Keynoting at Delivery of Things World Conference there. Oh, very good. Um, having a lot of time, spending a lot more and more time in Europe and particularly Germany. And yes, that to be a really me both. fertile audience. And uh, it is. So speaking there, running some workshops there, publicizing my book more there. Publicize it. So, um, my book is Designing Delivery, which I wrote for O'Reilly. It was published last year. Um, and it's really about putting together all the pieces of understanding what the drivers are for DevOps and digital business, and how do you actually, in a concrete way, put together the design and operations of systems and organizations so you can create these businesses that can move fast and deliver quality and deliver usefulness and learn as they go. Great. Jeff, we'll try to put a link it's on Amazon, I assume. Or yep. We'll try to put a link in the YouTube cool. uh, when we, we get this up there. But that's fantastic. Um, we're actually in Berlin next fall for one of our DevOps Connect events. But uh, likewise, I'm in London most of the end of May and June. Nice. You know, the one thing I've seen firsthand about DevOps is it is a worldwide kind of movement mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. It's not. Very uh, much so. Yeah, it's not necessarily, you know. U.S. based, nor and nor is this show, frankly. When you look at the companies here presenting, mm -hmm. uh, they they literally come from all over the world. So it's a great thing. Anyway, Jeff Sussner, it's been a, like a personal uh, highlight for me to have you on my show <laughs> I'm uh, here flattered. at, at, at I'm Interconnect. Flattered. That's great, and uh, love to hear more about what you're doing. Cool, all nice right? talking to you. Nice I really speaking to you, it. Jeff Sussner, uh, here at. Uh, IBM's Interconnect 2017. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com and DevOps TV.